Hello, and welcome to our discussion on the sales budget. So this is the first starting point for our master budget discussion. And again, the reason I say it's the first is because, as we'll see here, the sales budget is the first budget we need to complete. We need to know the sales before we can complete any other budget, whether that be the production budget, the materials budget, labor budget. We'll see that in just a bit, but we need the sales budget first. It tends to be the easiest one to put together once you get the numbers, but I say that basically from a textbook perspective, they're going to give you the numbers you need, and you just have to format them into the sales budget. That part is rather simple. It's probably the easiest of all the budgets, but as any marketing major or anybody involved in marketing will tell you, getting those numbers in reality is not that easy. Once you get them, putting that together is easy, but getting the numbers is not. You do need the sales budget before you can complete any other budget. As we'll see here, this is just a quick little illustration of how the budgets intertwine. Again, there are other budgets that will fall outside of this, but these are basically what we call the operating type budgets, uh, most of these. There are some of these that are actually financing, but for now we're just looking at the operating budgets, largely these, these other ones other than yellow. The income statement is an operating budget as well, though. So you can see we start the sales budget. It leads down to the cash budget because we, anytime we sell something, we're eventually going to collect cash. Maybe not right away, but we will eventually catch it. And it leads to the production budget because if we, if we want to sell something, we have to produce that number, possibly plus a little bit more for cushion. The sales budget also leads down to the selling general administrative budget because if you sell more, you're probably going to have more sales commissions, more uh, sales salaries. You're going to have a bigger store, perhaps, maybe more advertising to get those sales. So a lot of times sales leads to higher SG&A costs, selling general administrative. Now, the one connection I don't have, I think I ran out of space, was that the sales budget also leads down to the income statement because obviously sales are a revenue type item. Now this is where we're going to focus on today in this discussion, sales leading to the production budget. I will mention that the production budget also has its own connection to materials, labor, and overhead budgets. We'll talk just briefly about how sales impacts production and direct materials. So when you're putting together the sales budget, there are really two items you need to know. From a textbook perspective, you're going to get those items, and you just need to know how to put them together in your sales budget. So the two items are the expected number of units sold for that period of time and expected sales price per unit. So how much do we think we can sell that for? Now, uh, this is not just as easy in real life as looking at prior year data, although that's used as a starting point in many cases. We have to base it on that historical data, but we're going to tweak it for assumptions in the future. So yes, that happened last year. Do we think the environment we're operating within is at all different from last year? Maybe the market has changed. Now your product isn't as popular. There's some alternative out there. You have to consider that. Maybe your product was brand new last year, and now people are just starting to realize its importance, so they adopt it and it's growing. Maybe it's just entered another market in, in uh, another country, for example. Maybe it started off small and now we're starting to grow. That's a, certainly a, a big change for this year. Economic factors come into play. What's the economy like? Maybe last year was the peak right before a recession that is happening this year. Depending on your product, that may severely hurt you this year. Certain products are going to be needed one way or the other, but other products, certainly luxury items, aren't necessarily going to be needed in a recession economy. Capacity. We'll see more about this later, but if you're already operating at capacity and it's extremely expensive to expand that capacity, then you're probably not going to see a growth in your sales because you can't invest in new facilities to allow you to produce more units. But if you're well below capacity and there's plenty of room for growth, then you might want to tweak your sales budget for that. So this is the sales budget. Very simple version of it. 
Sales budget for the quarter ending June 30th, 2018, so we're going to need three months, April, May, and June. We have the number of units given for each of those months, and then we have a total for the quarter. Price per unit, for e it's just for the simplicity, we kept it the same. And sales dollars, uh, just multiply the number of units by the price per unit, we're good to go there. There was a pretty substantial increase from April to May for whatever reason. May to June there was a little bit. Now, that's our quarter. So you may be asking, why do we have these July and August sales out here? We're, June was the end of our quarter. And that's a very good question. I have some asterisks down here that help to explain that. When we get into the production budget and the materials budget, what we're going to say is that we want to have a little bit of ending inventory left over. So we don't want to produce just enough. In other words, we don't want to produce just 47,500 this quarter because really two reasons. First of all, our, our expectation may be a little bit under the reality. We may have a demand for 48,000. But if we don't have any units, we can't sell it, we may very well lose the customer. Of course, there's a risk of it going the other way as well. We produce too many units. But that's just one reason we may want to produce a little bit more, just to allow for cushion. But another reason, perhaps even more important, let's say 47500 was exactly what we needed for this quarter, but then we have some sales on July 1st. Depending on how long it takes to produce our units, we may not have anything ready to go on July 1st. Maybe it takes five days to produce those units. We don't want that to happen where we run out, we don't have anything on the first few days of a month, so that might be another reason to add in a bit of a cushion. So what we're basically saying here is that uh, we want to know, maybe we want to have a certain percentage, let's say 10% of next month's sales we'll have as ending inventory for our units in June. So 10% of July's inventory we're going to build into our expectations for June. We're going to produce Yes, the 47500 for that quarter, plus uh, 1500 to meet June's or July's expected sales, at least the start of them. So that's fine. That's why we need July to get June's production ending inventory. Why do we need August? The reason for that is the budget right after the production budget is the materials budget, and it has the same idea, same concept. We don't want to just have enough materials on hand to barely cover production. We might want to have a little bit of ending inventory left over to cover a little bit of the next month's production. So what that means is August's sales help us to get July's desired ending inventory for production units. That, July's desired ending inventory for production, helps us to know maybe we want 10% of July's production needs to get us June's ending inventory for materials. So that's where this may come into play. And again, I have that explained down here. So now we're going to go through those three elements I talked about a bit ago. The market. What do the customers want or need? What features are they expecting? What type of product? Is this a short-term need, a long-term need? Are they going to need replacements of that product? Or is it buy one, you're done for the rest of your life? Are you positioned to provide it to them? Do you have the equipment, the skilled labor, all the finance available to meet those needs? How strong is your competition? If, you're, if you've just developed a brand new product, you have a patent on it, and there's nothing anywhere near uh, its functionality, then you really don't need to worry about this perhaps too much right away. But if you're in a competitive environment where there are a lot of alternatives, it's an old industry, there are a lot of alternatives out there, then you have to be aware of your position in the industry, how strong is your competition. What market share do you currently have? Do you just have a little bit and you're planning on expanding? Do you already have the large majority of the market share and therefore you have a target on your back, people trying to pull that market share away? You just want to understand this as you're building your sales expectations. Capacity. So even if there's demand for a million units, if you only have the capacity to produce 10,000 units, and if you're not able to or willing to invest in a capacity increase, maybe it's very expensive, 
then that demand really doesn't matter. If you're already selling 10,000 units and that's all you have the capacity for, you can't expect an increase in the next year unless you decide to invest in new capacity. The other thing about capacity, when you're deciding whether or not to invest in new capacity, think about the demand for that product right now and whether you think that demand is sustainable. So is this just a hot product right now that you know things are going to change, it's not going to be as popular next year, there's going to be the next best thing? If that's the case, you may not want to expand in capacity if it can only be used for that product. Very specialized equipment, very specialized training, things like that that don't parlay into another product type down the road. That's where you may want to be careful. So that takes us to the end of the sales budget itself, that particular discussion. Again, this is the starting point. We are going to cover all of the various budgets in our different lectures here. Production, materials, labor, overhead, all of that stuff we will cover, but the sales budget starts it all. So I thank you for your time today, and I look forward to talking to you in our later sessions.